Asia is to give some ideas and of course the main question is whether there are some topics to discuss from any of you as well besides the topics yeah I mean except of the first two one topics from you and mm, I don't know at least Sandra likes to have the patch backlog as topic uh, on the left side I put the list from two years and last year's the main ones so can we Let's finally clone Jakub? <laughs> <laughs> this one uh, is on and I hear it in principle. Yeah. So who wants to make a start in terms of discussing something? Before I think that's <laughs> So in the in the previous talk, I think you said that you only want to enable the, the GCN devices when you actually run the test suite on it, well, on them. So, so the the, the sub sub sub. Uh, yeah. So this. every time we add a device, it yeah. doesn't work, and you we get someone to test it and then figure out what the bugs are, and then it works. Um, when it's like when we've got like. 20 devices and we're adding one more, it'll probably be fine. Yeah. But when it's a whole new thing, then it's, it, you know, there's, there's too many things that can go wrong. So it's not, it's not, it's not um, mature enough to just say, oh, I can just add a new device. I know what, from, just from the manual. Yeah, so, um, so, so I, I think I, I enabled two of them, right? So it, yeah. it's, it was quite a tedious copy and paste uh, Adventure to get. I am working on that. Are oh, you are working on I have, that? I have, I have, I have a dot def file which doesn't do anything, but I'm writing it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so it's basically you need the magic for the elf object and basically the name that you match from the yeah Rockham. Yeah, right, right now there's like 20 places where you got to go in and right. poke it and yeah, yeah. and tell it that the device exists and what its name is and what its magic number is and make fragments. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, right. And if we can cut it down to just config.gcc and a .def file, that would be great. Yeah. Um, but um, ultimately, there will be things like every device has a different metadata requirements. That they're, you know, you've got to put a different field in the assembler file, and you've got to um, uh, set the XNAC thing just right, and you've got to set the uh, the number of registers, whatever, because they actually have hidden registers you can't see, but you've got to count them, and uh, there's all sorts of little things that can get you, and it doesn't work if you get it wrong. Yeah, so so what I was trying to ask is, is there enough documentation how how like uniform they are? Because like for the for the, the discrete graphics ones, they just cut the number of shaders, so it should be basically if one of them works, all of those should work, or is that just my naive expectation? Yes, that's your naive expectation. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, so um, they, they don't just change the number of shaders, they change uh, the, the number of registers in the register file and things like that. And so you've got the same in the instruction set, but the, um, there are the shadow copies and stuff, There's very, n the number varies. And uh, so when you calculate how many threads you can run before you run out of vegetable, vegetables, vegetable, vegetable, registers, well, before you run out of re ve vegetables, um, then it's a, it's, it's a, um, uh, it, you have to get it right, otherwise it says, it just says this can't start, I haven't got the hardware resources. And if you do too few, of course, you don't get the performance. Um, so, you know, there's, there's it's, it's, every device is a little bit different so far. Um, but as we add more and more and more, we'll figure out how much. I mean, basically, the the only real resource that I found of figuring out what's in each thing is literally the LLVM user guide, which was written by AMD. But they haven't written it anywhere else that I can find that's useful. I mean, the ISA manual tells you what the instructions work, but it doesn't tell you what the metadata is. It doesn't even it doesn't tell you what the instruction uh, mnemonic is, or even. Um, Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, and, and that's not. I mean, we use the LLVM assembler of Linker, so that you know, if they don't support it, we can't support it. Uh, yes. So, I mean, 
I guess you don't have another GPU squirreled away somewhere. Um, your, all yours work now, so you're happy. Yeah. But I did get, when we submitted those patches, I had someone reply off list, why can't you just enable all of them? It's like, well, it's non zero effort, and I can't test it. <laughs> <clears throat> what about the generic or partially generic CPU, which uh, which LLVM does? Yeah, that does exist now, which it, um, is a new thing. Um, I haven't experimented with. Um, so generic AMD. Chip. Yeah, there, there is a uh, an ELF code that says just all of this family, but um, again, there's work to do to make that work. Because it, it would partly uh, help with that multiple offload code for the same device type issue, which, which should be solved anyway, but, but at least. Because right now, you basically can't pre-compile for the distribution with the offload code yeah. because you really don't know which, which GPU users will have. Yeah, and we need a multi-lib for every device that we support, so we don't enable all of them because there's too many. So kind of the users got to build the tool chain themselves, or we have all of the multi libs mm -hmm. uh, I guess I don't know. So, don't know so this, this generic thing. Do you know if if any of the Rockham versions that are released already can load those, or is this <coughs> even more experimental only? I, I don't. I haven't tried. You haven't tried. Okay. Um, my my expectation is if if it's in LLVM, it's in Rockham <coughs> because they're using Rockham. <laughs> So uh, that's more a question um, regarding this many multi-libs that we have to build for GCN because every architecture needs a separate target libraries, even if just the ELF header is different sometimes. Is there a way or has there ever been a way in GCC though that target libraries get built on demand when GCC is installed already? Because I would assume the same issue exists for a lot of embedded targets or has existed for decades already. Nobody? Or? Yes. You could use a linker plugin for that. Use what? A linker plugin. No, I mean, that, that's difficult, buff. <laughs> <laughs> set up. No, my, my, my thinking was to, um, not, not at compile time, but for example, you, you build GCC for GCN configuration, but do not build any target library, so just the compiler side. And then when the user installs that GCC or the distribution or whoever, and then when they actually know what target they have, then we have some scripts build system to then compile the target libraries just for that architecture and not the eight or whatever we currently built just because you may be using them at some point. But nobody remembers anything that such a thing was done before for embedded targets or anything. No, because that should really just be a scripting issue, build I system think issue. Right now built all the, all the multi-lips just yeah. in case. It's, I guess it's a thing that we could build into Mook Offload, um, but you'd have to have the new lib sources and the lib GCC sources and the lib G Fortran sources and I, the lib C++. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you need to have all the sources as well. I, I would keep that out of and everything. keep that out of MK Offload and just do this as a separate the, installation for step. The user code. We could uh, put into the data section the LTO bytecode, <laughs> and then we can do anything we want. Okay. No, I was just curious yeah, whether LTO such would a thing exists. Would. Uh, LTO, device, everything. Device side LTO would fix this. Mm -hmm. This looks like a topic which one should implement at some point. I, mean, I think there can be a lot of benefit of inlining at ATO level. One more for the list. Yeah.
maybe to pick something that's from this kind of what or what has the greatest benefit effort one should kind of try to get addressed besides of course adding new features and the general optimization for performance or so I'm not completely sure what's the best one to really start device side ITO procedural analysis or well, tracing, helping there, I'm not sure. I'm sure. <laughs> so uh, last year at the uh, SUSE Labs conference, I presented about offloading with OpenMP, just to get the idea across that it's very easy to use and that everybody has a laptop with some GPU that's in theory capable of doing something. And then, of course, I did a demo, and of course, it was only slower. So um, I guess the takeaway would be you have to work on performance or on ways to analyze why it's slow or better present why it's slow. So I, 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 of course, I took the opportunity to also introduce the OMP threading and OMP zimmed. And even with OMP zimmed, the, the experience is not always great from the performance side. And the offload is a total disaster. It may have been a disaster because of the GPU I was demoing on, but it was GCN. But, but it, it can be, I think, disaster just because the task is too small and takes time to offload. And oh, I, I, I tested it on, on the iGPU, on a GCN iGPU, and I expected there shouldn't be any copying involved but probably we don't implement that, right? So it's probably getting copied to device memory and all yeah. that. Yeah. And um, with, with OpenMP specifically, there is a problem that the libgomp implementation keeps a lot of internal state uh, during program execution and you actually have to go through libgomp runtime routines during your hot code path parallel ex execution and that does not work too well in GPU co execution context. So there are problems, there are architectural problems. That was one project where uh, one of our colleagues worked on to um, map OpenMP offloading things to the corresponding OpenACC thing if possible. Um, given the constraints that OpenMP specification has, obviously, um, because OpenACC has a different execution model in GCC, which more, much more directly uses the GPU execution without all the runtime library in direction. And that way you can already get great speed ups that does not resolve all the differences to vendor compilers, so there's much more work to do. I have an uh, idea, a structured way to approach this problem to um, basically decompose these several parts in the compilation where we can lose performance and go down to the actual code generation and then make sure that we are doing similar things than the vendor compilers, which I guess we consider ideal because they know <laughs> what, they, what code they should be generating at least most of the time. Um, and then work up again and re resolve the things in GCC where the abstractions basically make, destroy the performance. But that's, that will be a big project. Uh, I hope we will get to such a thing. But uh, So for the AMD specifically, uh, if you can write your program such that it spends as much time as possible on the GPU without, you know, the offload region isn't broken up, and you write your code in such a way that the vectorizer doesn't fail, then you get huge speed. And we're actually faster than LLVM in many cases because there you run in fully mask mode all the time. And we use straight loops with a masked epilog, which is theoretically faster. Um, so in some benchmarks, we can beat that. But the vectorizer fails easily, especially when you've got complex OpenMP directives that do funny things with loops collapsing and stuff. It's easy to, for the IR to defeat the vectorizer. 
and we had a whole discussion about that last year, which I've done nothing with. Um, but, um, and then the other thing is that our launch overhead is actually quite high. And so if you have a benchmark which blasts lots of tiny kernels, it gets slower. And that's partly architectural in the lib gomp because every time you run a kernel, there's a whole um, um, initialization thing which, um, where it sets up metadata and stuff before it even starts on the processing. But it's also because um, of the, the way that we do a mem copy um, of the parameters before we launch. Is, and a mem copy costs as much as a kernel launch. Um, and so if we can differentiate between different kinds of memory and optimize um, so some of them stay in host memory and access through the bus, and some of them are um, uh, copied in advance, um, then we can reduce the launch overhead. But again, that was a project I want to work on, but I'm not getting funding for it um, for reasons that are more political than practical. Um, and so we, we kind of have this, these ideas of how we, can, how we can fix some of these issues. But fix the vectorizer is a big task. <laughs> um, there's so many ways that it can trip over. Um, and we went through a whole project. I spent like a whole year making sure that the easy ways that could fail were all patched up. Um, so it's better than it was. But yes, you can still write your code in such a way that the vectorizer falls back to scalar code. And scalar code in the GPU is bad. Yeah, so, so the, the idea was just to, to get more people used to the idea of device offloading. Because, of course, you have to write code that would even benefit from that, right? Mm -hmm. And so I, I don't expect those people to use collapse and what, what OpenMP, now this optimized tiling or whatever, they just slap on OpenMP target right. on the OpenMP parallel four, and then that. it's slow. But if you do that, what you get is, what you get is team level parallelization without any vectorization. Oh yeah, you, you add then, I told them, add the teams, and then it gets faster, you have it's to say, slow, you, but it's faster. You have to say distribute yeah. parallel um, yeah, yeah. Uh, SIMD. Yeah. <laughs> or you don't get all three levels of parallelization. So we want to fix that as well. But again, um, not so easy said than done. We did a whole project of making it so that functions, so if you have a function call inside your loop, you can't vectorize a function call unless you have a SIMD variant, a SIMD clone. But there are no SIMD clones unless you explicitly mm -hmm. say you want one. So it's like, oh, well, we'd like to have SIMD clone of everything, please. And then, but then there was a whole project of the evil maintainer said you can't do that unless you clean them well, all up. Why? Well, uh, even even just getting a, a useful diagnostic out of that is yeah. well, that's going to suck because you have to declare OpenMP SIMD your function that you're calling yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. So the, and the um, uh, and but we have vector variants of all of the libm functions now. Lib, um, new lib um, has scalar and vector versions for everything that you're likely to call inside your. Um, scientific code, um, but anything that's in your own code, you have to put the directive on it, or you don't get it. And there's no there's no no diagnostic to say, um, you know, vectorization failed because of your fault. It just it just runs slow. Yeah. I mean, if you if you turn on the opt sim the opt um, opt, -info opt info thing, for, yeah, yeah. Um, but, but then it's... it will tell you that a whole bunch of loops didn't vectorize, yeah. but half of them shouldn't have. Yeah, I guess you would. We need to kind of make that easier accessible. At least the, these kind of obvious errors. Yeah. I mean, if, if the vectorizer just fails because of, usually the user can't do anything about that. But maybe if he can't compute the number of iterations, that might be something the user could fix. I mean, we could probably work on hinting the user to fix their code. Better, mm -hmm. yeah. In, in general, for the vectorizer and in, in the context of calls, but a lot of the time well. it's not the user's fault. I mean, they wrote three nested loops that would totally do the right thing, and somehow it didn't. Yeah, because of the open appeal lowering. Yeah, everything. Yeah. Yeah. 
And uh, it's one of the jobs to do the IPA uh, propagate, constant propagation and stuff like that, that really should work into the regions, uh, which currently doesn't. But on the vectorizer side, it, it would be nice if we could also, if we can vectorize one thing in the loop, but the rest of the loop is vectorizable, still look at the codes and maybe vectorize it and do the scalar. So what, what currently works is, is only if there is like uh, SLP opportunities inside the loop body, but you don't need to unroll. What we don't do is unroll and then vectorize parts of it. But it's, it should be easy to do, like many of the things, you know, <laughs> if there's enough time and uh, funding and everything. Because uh, even uh, OpenMP has those, uh, I think, uh, Pragma OpenMP ordered uh, uh, directives where you say this part of the loop should not be vectorized and everything else should be. <laughs> Yeah, I just wanted to mention that I have a student, uh, Yosef, he is here, and he wants to work on this uh, Watson propagation for, you know, offloaded regions. Nice. Uh, so we just started, so. <laughs> okay, maybe it's kind of the two other points with uh, realizing that the, the uh, data can access directly. I was a bit looking into it, but I think we need to fixed before automatically switching to ignore the mapping. Uh, some issues especially related to um, static memory, which is kind of the moment at the device and at the host, and there we cannot ignore mappings, and there are some, some corner cases which one needs to fix, and then I think we can think of automatically enabling that for APUs it works, and. Then there are, of course, these kind of special cases like <laughs> the GPU, which uh, in principle is an APU, but uh, still has uh, some of its own memory. And then the driver claims, since it has some own memory, it is not completely shared. So that's kind of a bit inf information flow issues due to the driver. And regarding debugging, I think the OMP traces or tools it's actually but it's mostly for tracing it's quite useful that one can see what the different parts do in terms of openmp but that's something to be implemented i mean andrew looked into it what needs to be done and said i want to have it and we have also someone who from the openmp consortium area where they are interested a bit helping but realize that some contributions would be possible, but it's still a somewhat large effort, so they need to find some, some time for doing help in that area, just to add. For OMPD, we have that partial implementation, but somebody would need to finish it. Yeah. Although for the debugger part, it seems as if there's much less interest uh, in terms of the user base, so. I think even debuggers like Total View, I think, don't support it yet. It's just kind of the main debugger for parallel code. And so the tools part seems to be more wished. And of course, it's nice to have both. And for full standard compliance, you also need it. But the tools part has, has basically two, two parts. Uh, one is the mandatory where uh, we need to provide it always. And the other is. Uh, just maybe it can be instrumented and otherwise not. And so maybe we should have two libraries, one one for normal running and one slower for, for the tracing. I mean, there could be also others where one does a bit more debugging and checking for the library side. I think that well, outputting some. I think, I'm not sure, uh, since they are changing things internally at LLVM, I think had one where they kind of one could send an environment variable and they were dumping out or to a file. Or, or I, I don't know exactly where. A lot of information in between what got mapped and a lot of tracing data, and that's of course slow. So they had two libraries. I'm not sure whether that state with the target things changing, but that would be definitely one option to have at least one. And,
And as kind of mentioned before, it might be also interesting to see, it's maybe not the most burning issue, but having a possibility to get information for profile guided optimization and doing benchmarks for a bit more in the instruction things or branches. I think that could be also interesting on the device side. As I said, as I said, mentioned, LVM has implemented it and just using the finally guided optimization data slowed code down because the cost models were wrong. So that would be then something to adapt as well. Sorry for taking the mic again. Um, there's, as we are now always thinking about accelerators, there's this new thing, it's called AI. So there are kind of other accelerators now on, on these accelerators. Is there anything in OpenMP or OpenACC to kind of access those? Or can we, can we do a GCC extension to access them? Are they even accepted? They are probably not accessible via the, the GCN, so the, the metrics multiplication thing, or? Uh, so, um, I don't know of any driver or anything that I could use to do it. That, that doesn't say there isn't one, it's I don't know of it. Um, they're not general purpose processes, are they? They're, like you say, they're matrix multiplied. So I, I think there are, are there not those kind of basic building blocks for the matrix multiplication yeah. also on the on the, the, the tensor uh, thing, also on the MD, is that accessible via GCN or so? so, it, it, well, so it, GC, it's, it's not the, the separate AI accelerators there? None, of, none of the devices that we are, I've played have got this AI thing. Yeah. And of course, GPUs are not great at multi matrix multiplica multiplication, it's all cross lane stuff, yeah. um, which is not their forte. Um, but um, uh, yeah, I don't, know, I don't know anything about those AI things. Um, I know people who do, we could ask them. <laughs> Um, but, um, uh, yeah, no, sorry, I don't have a story on that one. Yeah, so for, for GCN, there are there kind of intrinsics, like we have for the vector ISAs for the CPUs, you know, if, if there's any official intrinsic thing that you could, like, access those instructions that are not representable by C code and <coughs> generatable by the vector ISA? Uh, the only ones that are, so, the dot product and vector multiply instructions exist. Yeah. I investigated whether we could do anything with them, and at the time there was not. But I believe that we now have some dot product in the middle end. Yeah, we did. The vectorizer can yeah. Kind yeah, of yeah. pattern match those. Yeah, yeah so uh, that's something that we could absolutely implement. Okay. The dot products we could totally do. There are hardware instructions for dot product. Um, and there is a, you know, like a whole new. Um, um, uh, in, uh, register set to deal with it, but it's CDNA only, I think. Oh, okay, very cool. Um, so, um, yeah, the AVGPRs are only on certain devices. Um, so, you know, these new matrix instructions, uh, they they leave their, they use the this second register set. That is, yeah, well, like also with the smaller float and integer mm -hmm. types, right? I mm. think they are all, it's called mixed precision multiply, so they have the yeah, smaller no. precision operands and then generate the regular float result or something. I, I, I didn't get too deep yeah. into it. I looked and the GCC didn't have this stuff in the middle end, and I'm like, well, I'm not doing that project. And I, I, I think there's the same on in the NVIDIA side. I'm not sure if it's PTX encodable or not. It is, okay. <laughs> Yeah, so that uh, works at PTX level. Um, there are these tensor cores you can program that way. Currently, we do, don't have any intrinsics or anything for that. We could add that. Um, the other problem is, as you just said, the data types that you have to prepare for, for use by these cores. And then there's some, when you want to do a big matrix multiplication, you have to have a specific setup how you invoke the thing one after the other so that you get good performance out of it. So I last year there was a presentation at the Cauldron about um, pattern matching at Gimbal level, RTL level, I don't remember, uh, a, a CRC checksum codes for some RISC-V, I guess, architecture, which has some special 
blocks for that. And I had the idea we may use such a thing also if to figure out if there are code regions that could be used uh, for 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 these special cores, but uh, seems like a difficult project. Yeah, so I had an idea of maybe we can have a GCC specific built in that yeah. is kind of generic enough that it would match for yeah. at yeah. least both, not the, the all the others, but uh, or, or, or 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 if they are or if they are too complicated so that they that it won't match a single build it mm -hmm. won't match both like the GCN and the Pitix. Sorry, if you add a, G, a built in for the GPU, it also has to exist on the host. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, but I mean, but we currently have what three hosts? Um, the um, uh, well, there's only one for AMD, but for NVIDIA, we support the three, so that would have to all be fixed. But yeah. I, I I have never looked into the PTX support for these cores, so I I mean I saw it come and yeah I read a blog post about it, but that's it. But it does exist; you can program. And would you like to use it just in libgfortran or magically replace in Blast and? Well, I guess it's more like about giving users the ability to easily target those uh, accelerator parts. Because if they try to write this as C code, I can bet you 100% that you are not going to generate those instructions, right? I mean, like you uh, wrote vectorized code 10 years ago. Yeah. So, so having intrinsics kind of or if there are no such things on those targets, so we can't add another intrinsic, then we maybe can have a built-in. If one can design one that will be able to fiddle the things in a way that it can handle both targets. Otherwise, I mean, well, you, you could add a target-specific built-in, of course. But you would then, then the target would need to lower that into Gimple for the host. And if you have a generic built-in, we can lower that easily. I, I, I hope. So, so usually those are all fixed size, right? That's those multipliers, yeah. like four by four, or eight by eight. So it's just you can expand it into a linear yeah. code sequence. So you don't even need to generate loops or anything like that. So, or ideally, or, or, then the other way around, pattern match such sequences. Yeah, or, or, or even have the vectorizer at least generate SIMD code mm -hmm. for that. Mm -hmm. Before but making the matching is the problem that users are creative and yeah. they find. Yeah, I, 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 I don't want to <laughs> do the matching, but let yeah, the user use it. I mean, maybe LVM has already something like that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, should check. Yeah. And I think OpenMP, since the question came up, I think they don't really target these large language model type of AI problems. They, they just offer the generic things. And in terms of the users, they have PyTorch and I don't know, 10 other methods they currently use, partially generating some kind of kernel, partially really calling library calls. So that seems to be currently a bit in our world. So, but still having compiler support, half floating point and so on. And Using it where possible it makes sense. So uh, I think for OMP, uh, OpenMP, maybe they should use interop and, and write it directly because that can perform better. And uh, related to that, so we have been talking about the Tensor or other cores on AMD GPUs, NVIDIA GPUs. Then, of course, there's a whole lot of new AI chips and these kind of things. And these you cannot at all program generically. So Google, TPU, and whatever else exists. So you need to use their tool chain and you basically just describe what you do. So I mean, it's, it's programming, of course, but not what you could do from OpenMP, OpenACC, C code. Okay. Yeah, so that's yet an, yet another thing, but I don't see us looking into that anytime soon. Too much other things to do.
curious. Uh, how many people here are actually interested in trying it or have already tried it? One. <laughs> Two. <laughs> Three. Okay. That, that's better average than I thought. That's, that's <laughs> Um, maybe that's a good comment to make um, if people are maybe just not aware. So the distributions nowadays include packages for offloading support. So that's something you install and then in theory you can just write your OpenMP, OpenACC code and use your GPU. Um, for NVIDIA that should work due to the generic nature of PTX. What are distributions doing for GCN right now? Well, we, we ship the four or five targets that are okay. there. Uh, and, and then the user has to manually know their GPU and specify it. Mm -hmm. Right. That's the ugliest part. Could you, um, did, 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 did Susie enable all of the um, multi or just the default ones that are in config GCC? Only the default ones. Okay, so those... <laughs> Yeah, but, but, but not the Fiji for GC14 yeah. because it was Fiji no longer. It, it, well, I, I, I have a patch to to make uh, the older LLVM still work, but so I had to patch yeah. 13. I wasn't sure whether to keep on adding things to that list or just have the favorites in there or what. Well, so I, I don't expect that we have any any users because the first experience always will be it's to be just slower than before. But of course, of course it's the programmer's fault, but. Uh, yeah, no, there's definitely a wrong way to do it. Yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, if you write your program so that you, so that, you know, say you're a physicist and you're writing your weather model and you decide, and you decide that you're going to have the main loop in main, the, the, and then do every little thing in one thing at a time um, so that your um, hot code is spread out over a thousand functions um, six layers deep, offloading is not going to help you. Uh, if, you do, if, you're, if you refactor your program so it's completely inside out and you have all your hot code together in one function, then you'll get a speed up. Except of the kernel over load overhead. If you have tons of toy, uh, small kernels, you might have an overhead problem. But yeah. Well, the, the, yeah, the tons of small kernels is the problem. But I think it's still usable in the sense that one can try something at home for development and then runs to the supercomputer and might use a different compiler there. But I think for that purpose, in any case, it works already on a normal laptop. But having a performance boost there would be extremely useful in any case. Yeah, so I'm, I'm using it only for testing whether it works once on PTX and once on some GCN for each release we do, basically. But, but my, my only available PTX card is going to be dropped soon, so I have to keep installing very old CUDA versions. I can't help with that. <laughs> I heard how people from NVIDIA at the conference. My card is out of support already, so I don't test it anymore. I mean, my laptop has a working NVIDIA card and it even has the open car, so Unified Chat Randomly works with that one. So <laughs> the access systems, but yeah. And uh, the Maybe only not. issue with, with GCN is that if you have a laptop and your iGPU, you have to basically turn off X to be able to use it because otherwise, at least once in a while, your X will freeze because the hardware, the driver decides to reset the device because of some problem, and that of course takes X with you. Uh, yeah, uh, X. 
um, and Wayland was even worse in my experience. Um, the, uh, yeah, and so I run the test suite on this laptop. This has an 1103. But I did. I logged in without the G, without the graphical interface, and just ran it on the command line, and that was fine. But yeah, running it on the with you know in a window on 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 GNOME or whatever, it was mixed results. Sometimes it works. Yeah, I was okay for testing individual test cases. So it's not that it isn't supported. It could be because it only has one gig of video RAM. Uh, that probably doesn't help. And I've got three monitors. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, it's, you can do it. It's not like the drivers say no. It's just that it's not man enough device. Yeah, it's, I guess it's it's the matter of launching too many curls in too little seconds. Yeah, that gets it. Broken. Thomas did discover that if you put a three-second pause between every entry in the test suite, that you get better results. It also finishes this week, just about. <laughs> The final hack that I did was to invoke the rock um, SMI info or whatever is so that it dumps GPU information, temperature, memory usage, and everything before and after each GPU kernel launch, and that also was a good thing to make it work. <laughs> yeah, so there are problems in the AMD GPU stack, definitely. On, on NVIDIA, I regularly, uh, well, I have on my laptop uh, X, 11 session running and on the command line or in a window or whether remotely via SSH run the test suite in parallel so that does not disturb each other there. But when you interactively use the laptop and run some libgom tests then sometimes the screen freezes for a few seconds. <laughs> but I guess that what happens is that the GPU driver allocates the whole GPU to the test case and then the user interface has to wait until the kernel is finished, basically. So, uh, But that seems, seems more stable than the AMD GPU support, at least. Maybe since it was kind of us, but there are plans to put out the general one. Uh, there are some uh, Intel GPU and Intel debugging session at the end of the state today. And that was kind of the question whether there were intents to support those as well. I mean, currently I'm not knowing of anyone who on one hand uses them at all or in how far there's interest by others. I mean, currently I'm not knowing of one, but is there anyone kind of using it and being interested in it? I mean, be it user or whatever, or not? I mean, in terms of football computers, it's runs only supposed to be faster, but still only second fastest Aurora system in the US. So, so I, I, I think there might be the kind of opportunity. I've heard that ARM GPUs uh, are kind of jumping to the to the one API ship from somebody somewhere. I don't remember actually who who that was. So if, I'm not sure if if one can target one API. They have the spur v. So if it makes sense to if. If anybody would have time to do any work to try to target this Spurvy thing, or but the problem is that it's basically LLVM IR, so oh, okay. <laughs> so you need to support LLVM IR. Resurrect the Dragon Egg. Yes. <laughs> uh, so the Spurvy thing, uh, the original was LLVM IR. Then. The latest variant is uh, the break, and it's, I will say, more PTX-like. Uh, I did the ARM and GPU compiler originally. Uh, don't work there any longer, so I'm not doing But I have been considering doing a SPV back and for and uh, to the OpenMP and so on. And never got around doing it, because I'm doing uh, formal verification kind of stuff instead. Now, but um, I'm definitely interested. So, if someone more is interested, I 
we should discuss it. Yeah, Spur V would be a way to target uh, additional number of GPUs that we currently do not support. Of course, then the Spur V goes into some other compiler, proprietary, or LLVM, or whatever. Yeah, so basically we need GCC code generation for Spur V, then we need some middle and lowering adaptions for sure, and then a plug-in written for libgomp to use the corresponding runtime library to load the code to the GPU. And New lib support as well. New lib support, yes, yeah. So is there any Spur V AMD thing for GCN? Oh, yeah, well. I think it is, isn't, isn't Spur V part of like one of the graphics? Or? Uh, so, well, so the uh, 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 LLVM obviously supports GCN and has a Spurvia front end of some sort somewhere, I think. But have I, I've, I've never looked into it. And on the GCC side, we would need to decide how how to do the back end. If we do it like PTX or to stream it earlier. So if you go through RT, partial RTL or whatever. And, and, and of course, um, if you're using the LLVM backend, that's SIMT. Uh, so there's a whole can of worms there as well. Um, it's not, it's not, in, it's not um, um, impossible. Uh, we did a few experiments a while back and you know, it kind of worked. Wasn't complete, um, but uh, yeah, no, that's a it's a big project though. You know, we, that's, that's you know million dollar project that one. <laughs> uh, hello, I have a question. Uh, I see there are many open source uh, GPU progress, uh, and uh, what's the state about the OpenCC support for uh, those open source GPU? Do we have some support for those projects? Uh, can you name any any specific one? Because I mean, it's um, it's of course uh, it's it, it's it's a matter of yeah, like uh, uh, turn turn in GPT uh, uh, open source. Um, GPT will uh, support it uh, in Tinghua University. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we, if we don't have, uh, how can the developers from uh, Open GPU project uh, get enrolled in the OpenCC program? Yeah, so if, uh, I guess it, it is probably up to the people doing the uh, open source GPU to at least start contributing, for example, a backend like GCN, or to have, I, I would probably uh, suggest to, to them to, to have a PTX to whatever translation layer, just for simplicity to get initial support, or like a Spear V thing. So, but of course, they, they would be the ones to write the compiler from PTX or Spir V to to their own uh, GPU. So, because usually the, the, these um, open source GPUs are not readily available, or like in interesting markets that you'd get funding as a programmer to to work on on writing like yeah. offload support for those. So it's it's going to be difficult. I mean for. Thank you.
yeah, until we get some more questions, I try to kind of wrap up. I mean, besides what we had before is finishing this review and nearly finished projects about um, the language support, so OpenMP and also some OpenACC bit, it looks as if definitely some work is needed for performance to wrap it up and for a bit better tracing and informing the user about things. We seem to have something a bit in works and in, into procedure optimization with the students looking at it and at least some idea to get into the Intel One world with Spire, although not very explicit or short-term as solution in the case. And yeah, making it easier maybe to have avoid compiling for tens of GPUs with MD and having the generic ones explored and at the same time adding more. The kind of wrap up, anything I missed from what we discussed, any new things to add? Is long enough. <laughs> yeah, but as we see, in it, it's also not complete, but I mean, it's kind of just list what we had the last years discussed and new items get added. We want to hire some more people to work on all these things. So if you know of anyone who would like to work on such HPC related things, talk to us or yeah. to any other company here, I guess. Yeah. And oh, fortunately, I also have some some of code or some of code like people doing some part of the fun work. And of course, there are some bit more fun projects as well. In principle, fun. It's not doing the paid work. I know some who tried uh, offloading to a different compute node. So it's really distributed memory by because it goes through the net. I mean, such things can be, on one hand, fun. If being in a research environment, it might also bring a paper, but maybe not with the highest priority for general use, but still fun and good for conferences and some actual use. No, that would be nice. <laughs> that, no, that was. Uh, no, there's a, a team of 60 engineers over at AMD making one that works perfectly. And uh, that would be a lot of wasted cycles trying to reproduce that. Um, keeping up with all the devices that are actually different into the hood. And uh, yeah, no, nobody's paying for it. And we don't have the engineering bandwidth if they did. It would take it would steal it from GCC work, so I'm happy with sticking with the status quo on that one. But if you fancy a weekend project, knock yourself out. <laughs> in, in terms of link, I wonder if whether a mold would be, I mean, comparably easy, and it's an L format and so on. So I could imagine that getting the linker work, especially not on BFD linker, but on mold, that could be something reasonable and might be also maybe useful. I mean, the mold linker is not so bad. And, but for the assembler, I think I share the concerns. <laughs> well, there is CGEN, maybe. And then you take some AI to read the instruction manuals and emit CGEN code. <laughs> Yeah. How many instructions? What was Chris going on? Um, some. It has some instructions. Um, <laughs> There's a document. Yeah, no, there is a document. It's it's um, it's an it's an okay document. <laughs> is, is it correct most of the time? Ah, well, let's put it this way. It took it took about it took about five years for them to to point, to point out that the um, uh, the math functions we we're using didn't have the precision we needed. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it no, it so the it does not specify the um, instruction encodings at all. Uh, 
the, uh, the, the, the bit, the, sorry, the bit patterns are there, but it doesn't specify any assembler syntax at all. Okay. It, that's, uh, that's implementation defined. Well, good enough. Um, so, you can't, you, so you look at, so what you do is you look at the bit pattern that you, what you're aiming for, and then you try and guess what, the, what assembler instructions are going to produce that. And the only documentation I found for the assembler mnemonics is the LLVM test suite. Um, because it tests a bunch of this shouldn't work cases. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I mean that's a deliberate decision. The AMD ha ha hardware guys didn't shoot, didn't didn't specify an assembler. They, they you know, they they made it. They made a hardware. Um, whereas, and uh, but you know, it would be difficult to have anything generate anything from that so from the documentation because you because there's a de design steps in there that uh, the LLVM guys have done. Um, but we would have to, and we would probably want to make the same decisions. So we so end up just yeah. cloning what they've done. So I don't know. It, it's a thing you could do. It's a thing you could do. Or, or you decide to to just output dot byte <laughs> yes. assembly. Yes, you and could. Then you don't need a new assembler. Yes, you could do that. Yes, you go you go ahead. <laughs> no, no. Seriously, the um, uh, one of the 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 assembler had a bug for years up until like. LVM 13, that one of the instructions that we absolutely need was missing. It didn't work. Um, so we were in the GCC backend emitting byte, dot byte for that one case, <laughs> saving the SCC register. <laughs> but for, for the linker, that's an, an actual concern once we want to support device side LTO, because then we need the linker to call the, the uh, GCC LTO hooks. And I think. LLVM linker can't do that for the GCC linker plugin, not implemented. Mold does have that implemented, so that may be an option yeah. or good old LD. And Mold supports GCN? I mean, w w w how difficult is it to port a ELF linker to a different architecture? I guess not you need to that much. write support for all the relocations and stuff like that. Relocations, right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, the linker would be considerably easier. And if we want to do device-side LTO, it might be a thing we want to do. But aside from relocation, I mean, ELF text and that stuff, that's clear. But otherwise, OK, we're out of time, I guess. If you don't care about TLS and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Then thank you for attending. Yeah. Thanks for contributing.